So thank you everyone uh, for taking the time with us today to learn more about Cambro Food Storage Systems. I'm Patricia Guerrero and I work in the marketing department here at Cambro managing food storage and shelving product categories as well as the food safety program. So let's get started. During the next few minutes I'm going to be covering quite a few things, um, sharing with you our food safety initiatives, our store safe program here at Cambro and some of the projects we've been working on for the last three years and also some of the tools that are available to you to share with your customers. We're going to learn about some of the problem areas as it relates to food storage and how our food is being put at risk when operators choose not to implement food safety practices. We're also going to spend some time covering the store safe products that make up a complete food storage system. So let's start off with store safe. Uh, we started our store safe program about 10 years ago. And at the time, it started off as a brochure that uh, basically identified products that help support food safety. We took a hard look at all the different products that we offered that not only help make operators' lives easier, but also help them support food safety practices and eliminate pro points of cross-contamination. After some time evaluating this program, we decided it was time to do more with the message. We're all aware of the constant updates on food that is being contaminated or the latest foodborne illness scare at a restaurant or at the grocery store. One day it's spinach, the next it's peanut butter, the next it's a well-known restaurant chain under scrutiny. Not sure if you guys all remember the crisis uh, that Jack in the Box experienced years back uh, in 92. Well, for them it became the crisis of 92 through 96. Uh, for three years after the scandal broke out, uh, their sales across their entire system uh, was down uh, to 15%. So that's a long time to recover from a foodborne illness or a scandal, and thanks to social media, it doesn't take very long for the entire world to know. We all pay close attention to these reports because food safety matters to everyone, and it should. We want it to be part of that solution, not just making the products for food service, but also by educating our customers through different channels of communication. So why does it matter, and what are we doing about it? Again, we talked about the store safe brochure. What you're seeing on screen is uh, the new version of the store safe brochure. We basically made a recommitment to store safe, and we took the existing brochure and added some new tools to it, and actually uh, developed an electronic version of it. And from this, we developed the people process product of store safe. It wasn't just about the products anymore. It was about the people using the products and the different processes involved in making sure that we are serving and delivering safe food to our customers. So we took the store safe brochure and added an electronic version with videos directly embedded into the brochure. So now instead of just telling our customers how our products help support food safety, we could now show them through short mini video clips. We also have a store safe microsite that's dedicated to food safety where we have some of these product videos and other helpful information as well. I encourage you to check it out. And I also sent a recap to all of our reps with some of the tools that I'm going to be referencing in this webinar. So make sure you ask them for it. We incorporated StoreSafe into our training program, everything that we do with our customers, our communication, um, the training that we have at our Canberra colleges uh, throughout the year, and also at our trade shows. The StoreSafe message is very prominent throughout our booth, and there are stations that are specifically dedicated to food safety. Another way we get the StoreSafe message across is through our blog partnering with food safety professionals to bring our customers educational material that speaks on everything from, from preventing violations at off-site events to explaining the differences between critical and non-critical violations and how to prevent these. So as you can see, everything that we do here at Cambro is about food safety. What else are we doing? Um, as you can see here, the photo, that's a, a picture of our booth at the NRA show. And uh, some of the things that we're doing, another initiative is that we're partnering with health inspectors, not only at the local level, but also nationally. We meet with them regularly to inspect our product, evaluate our product, and they also provide lots of helpful feedback. We're also a supporter and exhibitor at the National Health Inspector Conference every year. We have a health inspector on staff as a consultant. Since we realize we don't have all the answers to everything when it comes to food safety, we decided it was best to partner with those who do have all the answers. And this month, we launched our Ask Shelly campaign. This campaign served as a risk-free casual forum 
for operators, distributors, reps, basically anyone in our industry or not in our industry to ask questions regarding food safety. We have Shelley Wallingford, a registered environmental health specialist uh, and field health inspector for 13 years. Um, she's going to be working alongside our team at the booth at NRA to answer questions. And you can also submit your questions online at cambro.com forward slash ask Shelley. So far we've received a great response to this campaign and we ask you to lean on us as a resource to also share this knowledge with your customers. So again, why does it matter? Here's a perfect example of someone that could have benefited from food safety training and store safe. This is not the back of a delivery truck that you're looking at, it's a walk-in cooler. This area is so jam-packed the kitchen staff could not reach the product stored in the back. And just so you know, this is not a staged photo, this was a photo that was sent to me by a health inspector. I see a lot of issues with this picture and could probably spend the entire time just focusing on some of the problem areas here. A few that stand out just by looking at this is that nothing is properly labeled. There's no receipt date uh, or even labeling of what is being stored. Uh, as you can see here, there's improper thawing of meat, uh, torn and punctured boxes, and definitely a lot of overstacking here. Um, a huge problem with this is that uh, this food product is not receiving proper ventilation that it needs to stay fresh and to stay safe. Here's another example, and I apologize for the horrible photos. This is not what health inspectors call proper food storage. These corrugated boxes are to be used for transporting and not for food storage. According to the health inspector that sent these to me, these chickens had been sitting out for quite some time and not only sitting outside of refrigeration but also sitting directly on the floor. A lot of areas for cross-contamination here. And here's another photo, um, pretty disgusting. I'm not even going to get into this one but I wanted to show it to you so you can see some of the problem areas that are happening out in the field when somebody is not educated on food safety. So let's get to the good stuff now. One of the unique things about our product line is that we have such a wide variety of products that apply to all areas of food service, service, starting from receiving all the way to cleaning and sanitizing. We're going to focus on a few key areas today, starting with receiving and moving on to storing and also getting into a little bit into prepping and some of the food uh, products or the food equipment and supplies that apply to each of these processes. Here's some of the hazardous uh, areas when it comes to receiving. We saw the pictures with the cardboard boxes and here's another example uh, on why these are not a good idea to use for long-term storage. These cardboard boxes travel from many places and can become contaminated with deadly bacteria that can contaminate the shelving units, the counters, aprons that the uh, kitchen staff is using. Our food is traveling from a lot further these days and the more handling and transporting, the more it's at risk. You could be bringing in bugs from the outside into your restaurant and actually contaminating good food. So it's best to transfer them from the original shipping cartons to FDA NSF approved containers with proper lids. And here's an example of a proper lid, our polycarbonate sliding lid. You never have to remove these lids so they always stay on the container. So it's another way to reduce the necessary handling and prevent cross-contamination. What makes these, great, these lids so great is that you never have to remove them to access the food product being stored. What normally happens in a busy operation is the kitchen staff removes the lid and places it on what could be a contaminated surface. Also the great thing is that you can see right through the material uh, so it makes it easier for inventory management. The staff doesn't have to continuously remove the lids to see how much more product you have or if you have to reorder. We also have our cam crispers. Uh, and these prevent cross-contamination because they basically act as a self-contained system where when you receive your product outside you can actually rinse it and uh, let it dry or uh, drain the, the, uh, the water out and then roll that right into, into the walk-in cooler uh, for safe storage. So it eliminates another point of cross-contamination or additional uh, unnecessary handling. So the idea is um, with the source safe products is that you can go from a situation that looks something like this to this and then to this with food product. One of the things that health inspectors shared with us is that many of them when they go in for an inspection is they go directly to the walk-in cooler first to see what the situation is like there. 
and chances are if everything's up to standard in the walk-in cooler, the rest of the restaurant is going to be up to standards. The reason for this is that there's a lot going on in a walk-in cooler. A lot of activity, a lot of different uh, kitchen staff accessing product from the walk-in cooler. And so it gets very busy, and the busier it gets, the more disorganized it can become, the less clean. And so if somebody is um, actually doing what they're supposed to be doing and training their kitchen staff properly and keeping this area organized, chances are they're doing that with everything else in their restaurant. So we'll get into uh, shelving for a bit. Uh, we have two lines that I'm going to be covering, our camp shelving and elements line. Uh, they both basically offer the same features and benefits. They both can apply or can be installed into freezers, coolers, uh, dry storage, any area without any risk of rust or corrosion. Um, a lot of operators tend to go for the lighter, I mean the darker shelving units because uh, they share with us because it hides the dirt. Well, we don't want people to hide the dirt. We want them to be able to see the dirt so they can clean it. And that's the reason we've designed our shelving to make it very easy to clean uh, where you can see where there's any problem areas. You can easily remove those shelf plates and run them right through the dishwasher. So it makes it very easy. Another benefit is that our shelf plates are embedded with a cam guard antimicrobial protection that doesn't wear off uh, with even washing or scrubbing. So let's get into our containers as well. Another area for um, hazardous uh, cross-contamination can be when you have containers that are uncovered or you have operators that are using saran wrap or aluminum foil to cover these products where they're not properly labeled. So this is another area of, uh, of problem for an operator, um, if you're not labeling the food product, you don't know when it came in or when it's time to toss it out. Another bad idea is uh, when they're using masking tape. Um, it's important that everything's properly labeled, but also that you're not using masking tape because it can harbor bacteria. We have our store safe labels that appear, uh, disappear completely in less than 30 seconds. You simply run them under hot or cold water for the dishwasher. Um, safe for all sewer and septic tanks as well. So they come off very easily. As you can see here, it lo looks a lot nice and neater than uh, having masking tape on your containers. Here's another example with the saran wrap or aluminum foil that can easily become punctured. This is great for leftovers at home or covering food um, at home, but when you're actually feeding the masses, it's a good idea to make sure that the food is properly covered. Um, not only does it help with preventing cross-contamination, but it also prolongs the life of produce. And here we have our safe thawing kit, uh, or our colander kit. It's, again, it's another self-contained system that's perfect for thawing and storing food products. And again, you see the sliding lid there that makes it very easy. Um, when a kitchen staff walks into a walk-in cooler, they often remove those lids and never put them back on. So this, uh, with this system, it ensures that the, the lid always stays on. Then we move on to our ingredient bins and also our dunnage racks. And the way that these uh, help reduce cross-contamination is that a lot of the food product that's being delivered for dry storage, for instance, flour or sugar, uh, those bags uh, are perfect for transporting, but they can easily become punctured if not stored properly. So the idea is to be able to transfer that product in those bags from there to the ingredient bins for safe storage. Um, also, you can roll these uh, ingredient bins right under a shelving unit. And the same goes with these dunnage racks. These are perfect for at the receiving point when you, your restaurant gets very busy. Instead of placing that food directly um, or the food being delivered directly on the floor, you can actually elevate it, keep it off the floor, and place it on the dunnage rack until you have time to organize it into the, the walk-in cooler or the shelving unit. Here's another area of uh, cross-contamination. I actually took this picture at a very busy restaurant, and unfortunately during the time I took this picture, it wasn't very busy at all. As you can see, all of these pans, uh, most of these pans are bent. Um, a lot of the refrigeration is escaping, and the food is not being held at the proper temperature. Uh, the other problem is that none of these uh, pans are covered. So it's actually compromising not only food safety, but also the quality of the food. So it's not a good idea to have this. And the perfect solution for an application such as this, such as this for uh, the prep lineups or prep tables or even steam tables are our flip lids. Uh, the great thing behind these flip lids is that they always stay on the pan. So even during the slow period, if you need to close 
or uh, secure the product, you can actually just close that flip lid um, and it makes it very easy where the employees are not removing them or placing them on a dirty counter, for instance. And then we also have our high heat pans or H pans and lids. Uh, this is basically a jack of all trades pan or material. It can go from prep line to baking to storing to serving and also cleaning. So these are microwave safe, dishwasher safe, and it makes it very convenient not to have to transfer that product from one pan to the other for cooking or for steaming. So we kind of covered some of the key product lines that are part of our store safe program. Um, and one of the other uh, things that we offer as part of our service is that we can assist by performing a complete storage audit of the various areas of a restaurant. And our reps can assist, we can also assist with that, where we go into a restaurant and we observe the employees, we observe the different processes. If somebody's having an issue, let's say, with, with the receiving, uh, we can you know, come in during the receiving time and observe what's going on, the activity, and provide a recommendations of no obligation, of no fee, as part of our service. So make sure you ask your rep about that. And just to recap, uh, we kind of covered a little bit about our store safe program, so now you're a little more informed on what we're doing with some of our initiatives. Um, and also I recommend that you take a look at our store safe microsite for additional information and also to watch some of our videos. We also covered a little bit about storage wars and the don'ts, some of the things that the health inspectors don't want to see, um, and some of the products that help solve those issues. And we kind of covered what makes up a store safe system or a storage, com uh, I'm sorry, a complete storage system. Um, it's starting off with shelving to the storage containers to the proper labeling that's required. Um, so I recommend that you take a look at that and also ask our rep about the storage assessment. Uh, we also have a really great uh, tool that I sent the link to to other reps on a storage makeover that we did uh, a year ago, I think, where we actually went in and revamped a complete operator's, uh, an operator's complete storage system. Uh, we took some of the problem areas and we documented the before and after. Uh, this operation was having some issues with uh, organization as well as wasting a lot of food product. And so we went in there, observed their operation, documented all the problem areas, and were able to offer specific storage solutions. So this is kind of um, basically the proof of what we, with the outcome of a storage assessment. So a great short video that you should watch. And again, um, just thank you for your time today. And you can email any questions directly to me at pguerrero at or you can ask your local sales rep for uh, information.